In part A of the question, we are asked to determine the magnetic field strength inside the coil. Now, the symbol, of course, for magnetic field strength is B. So this question is asking us for B. We are given several parameters here. We have the number of turns in the solenoid, which ends up being symbolized by capital N. We have the length, which will be L. And then, of course, we have a radius, which we will actually use for part B of the question. And then we have a current, which is symbolized by I. So maybe if we can find a relationship between the magnetic field and then the number of turns, length, and current, we would be in good shape. It turns out there is such a relationship. We found this in chapter 19, so the previous chapter. And we can see that the magnetic field of a solenoid is equal to a constant value, which we've listed down here below, multiplied by lowercase n, of which we will speak in just a moment, and multiplied by the current. Now, lowercase n is simply the number of turns divided by the length of the solenoid. So we can actually write the magnetic field equation in the following manner. We'll take the constant mu naught multiplied by lowercase n, which again is capital N divided by L. So we'll make that substitution and then multiplied by the current. So really all we need to do is plug in the known values. We will have to be careful about a couple of things. The value of the constant is listed on the side. It's 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7th Tesla times meters per amp, multiplied by capital N, which in this case is 400 turns, divided by L, the length. Now the length is given in centimeters. We need to have that in meters. So what you do is take the centimeter value, 36, and then multiply this by 10 to the minus 2. That will convert it into meters. And so there we have capital N divided by L, and then multiply by the current, which is stated to be 5 amps. So we can punch this into our calculators, and we can see that the magnetic field strength turns out to be 0 0.00. 698 approximately. This is actually going to turn out to be Tesla because the amps cancel out as do the meters. So you're left with Tesla. Your homework system might require you to convert this into millitesla. So if that is the case, then you would have to multiply by a conversion factor. We know, of course, that one millitesla is 10 to the minus 3 Tesla. So if you take this value and basically multiply by 1 divided by 10 to the negative 3, you would get 6.98 millitesla. So this is the correct answer for part A of the question. Back in part B, we are asked to determine the magnetic flux through a circular cross-sectional area at the midpoint of the solenoid. In this chapter, we have learned that magnetic flux, which is symbolized by this Greek letter with subscript B, is equal to the magnetic field times the area times the cosine of an angle. So let's write that equation down below. This is part B. The magnetic flux is equal to the magnetic field times the area times the cosine of an angle. Now, we already have the magnetic field. We just determined that in part A. The area is going to be quite easy because the question noted in part B that this is a circular cross-section. So that means for area, we would use the area of a circle, and we know that the area of a circle is pi times radius squared. Perhaps the most challenging thing here in part B is the angle. So let's grab a picture of a solenoid, and let's focus our attention on the middle section of it. So here's a picture of a solenoid. At the midpoint, we would have a circular cross-section right about there, we can see that there are magnetic field lines that are passing through the center. Right at the midpoint of the solenoid, we would have a magnetic field line that comes straight through like this. So you can imagine a magnetic field line. If it's helpful, we can actually draw the circular cross-section over here. We have the magnetic field line passing straight through the center. Now, for any loop, there is an imaginary line that also passes through the center. It's known as the normal line. And so we can draw this imaginary line right through the center, and we can label that line the normal. Now that's important because for the angle of the magnetic flux equation, we need the angle between the green magnetic field line and this red normal line. Hopefully we can see that the angle between them is zero degrees. So in this problem, we're going to comfortably say that theta is equal to zero. So now all we have to do is plug in all the known values. 
When you plug in the magnetic field, make sure that you don't use the millitesla value. Use the tesla value because that is the standard unit. So it's 0 0.00698 tesla times the area. Now remember, the area is pi r squared. So we'll take pi and we'll multiply it by the radius squared. The radius was 3 centimeters. That needs to be converted into meters. So we'll take the 3 centimeters and multiply it by 10 to the minus 2. That becomes meters. Don't forget to square it. And then finally, we're going to have the cosine of our angle, which is 0 degrees. So we'll fill in cosine of 0 right here. We'll pick up our calculators and process this. And when you do this, you should get approximately 1.97 times 10 to the negative 5 as your answer. And since we calculated a magnetic flux, what we'll have is Tesla multiplied by meters squared. So we would have Tesla meters squared as the unit. And so this would be the correct answer to part B.